one of the fastest supercars not just of the 90s but of all time. A high-strung thoroughbred designed in Japan and built in Germany. The Toyota GT1 is a supercar not even the wealthiest could dream of owning. In 1995, Toyota made its first move into GT-Class racing at Le Mans. They raced an LM spec, race-modified Supra, and a custom-built MR2-based MC8R. The MC8R was created solely to race at Le Mans, and due to the extent of the modifications done to the base MR2 to create the car, a small number of production MC8Rs were produced to meet the requirements for the GT car class, meeting the minimum requirements to be considered road legal and therefore allowing the Le Mans spec car to compete. Unsurprisingly, the custom-built MC8R beat the Le Mans spec Supra in 1995 and went on to compete again for Toyota in 1996, though it won neither race. In 1996, it dawned on Toyota's racing division that exploiting loopholes to enter over-qualified cars into the GT class at Le Mans was the only way to have a real chance of winning against the likes of Mercedes and Porsche. With that, Toyota Team Europe had until Le Mans of 1998 to design and build a winning race car. Toyota had no intention of doing it by the book, instead bending the rules to breaking point in two particular areas. The first and most outrageous loophole that Toyota found was that of storage space. To qualify for the GT class, a car is required to have enough storage space for a standard sized suitcase. This is a measure to ensure that the car is production based and not unrecognisably modified from its production counterparts. Obviously, Toyota did not want to build a racing car that would have a suitcase sized void somewhere in its bodywork, so they found a way around it. They instead convinced ACO officials that because the volume of the car's fuel tank was greater than that of a standard suitcase, it should be considered allowable storage space, because when the car is officially inspected for the race, the fuel tank is empty. Astonishingly, this was allowed. The Toyota GT1 was ready for Le Mans 1998, though it was not exceptionally successful. Of the three cars that entered, only one of them finished, and it finished ninth. For 1999, the rules were changed, forcing the GT1 to compete in the closed cockpit LMGTP class alongside the newly built AMG CLR. Unlike rivals Mercedes, who built an entirely new car, and Porsche, who dropped out of the competition entirely, Toyota's car from the previous year fell very nearly in line with the new regulations, allowing it to compete with minimal modification. Toyota GT1s finished first and second in their class at Le Mans of 1999. As mentioned earlier, there were two major loopholes that Toyota exploited, the first regarding storage space and the second regarding production vehicles. To qualify for the GT car category, Toyota realised they only technically had to make one single road legal car. Given that they had no intention of selling it to anyone, they could leave out all of the common comforts of a road car, making changes as minimal as were legally possible. As a result, the differences were very, very small. The rear wing was slightly lowered, the suspension slightly raised, and the fuel tank was made very slightly smaller, and, of course, catalytic converters were retrofitted to ensure that the car met emissions regulations. This was, to all intents and purposes, a Le Mans GT car that was road legal, and Toyota built just two of them. However, as mentioned, these were not production cars that were up for sale like the AMG CLK GTR, a car created to meet the same set of rules. No, 
these were the absolute bare minimum. Nonetheless, there is two road legal 600 brake horsepower Toyota GT1 road cars in existence. Unfortunately, both are in museums and neither is for sale.